Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India going to talk about the Jordan canonical form of the matrix. Before going to the Jordan canonical form, let us try to understand why we need it and what it is good for. So to do this, let's first think about the rational canonical form of a matrix, which we've already seen. So what it says is that every matrix A, of course with entries in some field, uh, is similar to a unique matrix of the form CF1, CF2, CFR and zeros everywhere else. So this is a block diagonal form and uh, here these are polynomials F1, F2, FR and we have F1 divides F2 divides FR and uh, this matrix CF is, uh, is the companion matrix of the polynomial F and so this is defined to be the matrix with the form so if F of T is the polynomial t to the n plus a1 t to the n minus 1 plus a n then the cf is the matrix well firstly it has um, ones just below the diagonal it's an n by n matrix and in the last column you have the negatives of the coefficients of f so you have here minus a n minus a n minus one minus a one. The problem with the Jordan canonical form is, well, it does solve the similarity problem in the sense that you can check if two matrices are similar by computing their Jordan canonical, uh, uh, rational canonical forms. But the problem with the rational canonical form is that it obscures the nature of a matrix. Let's look at a very simple example of a matrix. So just take the matrix 2, 0, 0, 1. So if you take this matrix, then its rational canonical form is uh, the matrix 0, 1. Um, it's a companion matrix of its characteristic polynomial in this case, if you work it out. And its characteristic polynomial is t squared minus 3t plus 2 so it will be minus 2 3 so that's the rational canonical form of this matrix 2 0 0 1 so this very nice matrix the fact that it has uh, two distinct eigenvalues namely 2 and 1 and that it's diagonalizable all this is lost in the rational canonical form from this rational canonical form you cannot really understand anything about the matrix. So instead of the rational canonical form, we use the Jordan canonical form if we want to truly understand the nature of a matrix. And that's what we're going to see today. When we looked at the classification of uh, finite abelian groups of a given order, then we saw that there were two ways to do it. And uh, one was just to directly apply the structure theorem for finitely generated modules over a PID. And the other was to apply the structure theorem after first applying the primary decomposition. And the difference between rational canonical form and Jordan canonical form is the same. To obtain the Jordan canonical form, you first find the primary decomposition of your uh, module of the module corresponding to your matrix. And then after that, you apply the rational canonical form to each part. Uh, well, not quite the rational canonical form. The basis we use will be slightly different, as you shall see. So uh, remember just uh, this primary decomposition for a moment. So if you have M is an R module, then we defined, um, and P is a prime element of R. Say R is a principal ideal domain. We'll be taking it to be polynomials. Um, then you can define MP to be um, 
m belonging to m such that p to the km equals 0 for some positive integer k. And this is called the p primary part of m. And m is said to be p primary if m is equal to mp. Okay, so and also we know that if m is a torsion module, which means that every element of m is killed by some element of the ring, then m is direct sum over all primes p in r actually prime ideals p in r of mp and here only finitely many of these uh, mps will be non-zero if m is finitely generated so what does this say in the case of the kind of modules that we associate to matrices so uh, Jordan canonical form works over all kinds of fields, but in this course, we'll just focus on algebraically closed fields. So let's take K to be an algebraically closed field. And uh, the ring R in this case, the relevant ring R is the ring of polynomials in K. So what are the prime elements of, um, of the polynomials in K? Well, we've seen that primes of R uh, are basically uh, linear polynomials. And so prime ideals of R, let's say, each one is generated by a monic polynomial. So each prime ideal is in the form T minus lambda for some lambda in the field K. These are the primes of R. So then you can talk about, um, so, so now given a matrix A, um, you can talk about its T minus lambda primary part. So, so remember that M A is just a K T module given by K to the N and T dot V is just the action of A on V as a thinking of V as a column vector and multiply it on the left by A. And now if you ask what is the T minus lambda primary part of A? This is uh, V in Kn such that T minus lambda to the power K times V is 0. And um, this is uh, sometimes called the lambda generalized eigenspace of A. The so this is uh, we usually denoted by v lambda and it's called the generalized eigenspace for lambda so in particular if uh, we take k equals 1 then we're saying that t minus lambda times v is 0 which is saying that, uh, so this actually literally means that uh, a minus lambda to the power k v is zero. So we take k equals one, then this is saying that a times v is lambda times v, which is uh, the definition of an eigenvector, v being an eigenvector. And so when we take k equals one, then we get the eigenspace. And here, well, I should have said for some k, greater than 0. 
So now if you take the space of all vectors v in kn such that t minus lambda to the kv is 0 for some k greater than 0, then you get something larger than the eigenspace for lambda and it's called the generalized eigenspace. And so now what the primary decomposition says that this vector space k to the n on which the matrix acts is a direct sum over lambda in C of P lambda. Because on the face of it, this looks like an infinite direct sum, but it isn't because the generalized eigenspace will be trivial, but for all but finitely many lambda in C. And um, well, uh, um, because you know, k to the n is a finite dimensional vector space. So this is a finite direct sum. And uh, now, <clears throat> uh, A takes V lambda into V lambda. Well, it may not be all of V lambda, well, it usually is, but A takes V lambda into V lambda. We know that because um, V lambda is actually a submodule of M. And so, um, let a lambda from v lambda to v lambda be the linear map obtained by restricting a to v lambda. Okay, and then what we have is that a can be written as similar to choose some any basis of v lambda then you will have a lambda 1 a lambda 2 v lambda m for some lambda 1 up to lambda m so these are the lambdas for which v lambda is non zero and now what we need to do is to try to understand each of these parts a lambda i and try to give a canonical form for that. In order to do this, note that um, the module m a lambda, so let's just fix some um, lambda for which v lambda is non-zero, and then you look at the module m a lambda, well this, as we have seen, is t minus lambda primary. And uh, so, uh, it's uh, the its structure has to be of the form m a lambda has to be isomorphic to k t mod t minus lambda to the let's say um, k one direct sum k t mod t minus lambda to the k two and so on up to k t mod t minus lambda to the power kr. No other uh, factors can occur. Basically, if you have kt mod pt occurring in the um, in a lambda primary module, then we've seen that um, that polynomial pt has to be a power of t minus lambda. So only powers of t minus lambda can occur in the decomposition of m a lambda. And now let's see how to understand one of these. So suppose we have M is KT mod T minus lambda raised to K for some integer K. And then uh, <clears throat> we want to understand uh, the action of T on this with respect to some basis. So take basis. of kt mod t minus lambda to the k as e0 equals 1, the polynomial, the image of the polynomial 1 in this quotient, e1 equals t minus lambda, e2 equals t minus lambda squared, e k minus 1 equals t minus lambda to the power k minus 1. 
and then let's see how uh, multiplication by t acts on this so t e i is t into t minus lambda raised to i which i can write as t minus lambda raised to i plus 1 so that's t minus i into t minus lambda uh, t minus lambda into t minus lambda raised to i so to compensate for that i must add a plus lambda t minus lambda raised to i so that is just uh, e i plus 1 plus lambda e i so if you write down the matrix of this then you have that t acts by the matrix It has um, lambdas along the diagonals. And um, just below the diagonals, it has ones. And we'll call this, it's a K by K matrix. We will call this matrix J, K, lambda. Such a matrix is called a Jordan block with eigenvalue lambda of size k. Okay, and these are the building blocks of matrices over an algebraically closed pool. So let's just put everything together so firstly we have that a is similar to a lambda 1 a lambda m for some lambda 1 lambda m so these are the uh, lambdas for which v lambda i is not equal to 0 and then what we have is that a lambda i is similar to um, well so firstly yeah so k a lambda i m a lambda i is isomorphic to k t mod t minus lambda i raised to k let's call it i1 plus kt mod t minus lambda i raised to k i r i and then on this block itself uh, let's just take some generic k here or we could take k i j this is isomorphic to m subscript j uh, lambda i comma k i j the jordan block with uh, oops i think i have my subscripts yeah no that's right with eigenvalue lambda i and size k i j so finally uh, what we have is that the matrix a is similar to a matrix of the form so firstly you'll have um, j lambda 1 k 1 1 up to j lambda 1 k 1 r 1 then j lambda 2 k 2 1 j lambda 2 k 2 r 2 and so on up to j lambda m k m 1 j lambda m k m r m
and zeros into there. So basically it's a block diagonal matrix and the block diagonals are all Jordan blocks. Okay, let's look at a couple of examples to make all this more concrete and easier to understand. In particular, let's also see how to compute uh, the Jordan canonical form of a matrix. So uh, for this, let's start with a matrix which is in rational canonical form. So suppose A is a matrix in rational canonical form. And so M A is um, well, let's just say is A is a matrix such that M A is isomorphic to K T mod um, T minus 2 plus K T mod uh, T minus 2 times T squared minus 5 T plus 6. So this is basically giving us the uh, rational canonical form of the matrix. So it's saying that A is similar to um, 2 and then there's this 2 by 2 block here 0 1 uh, minus 6 5. This is the rational canonical form of A. And from this I'll show you how to derive the Jordan canonical form. So, so now let's factorize this polynomial here. So, um, so this uh, t squared minus 5t plus 6 is t minus um, 2 into t minus 3. So, uh, what if we want to break this up into, um, um, into, uh, primary parts, we need to separate out the t minus 2 primary part and the t minus 3 part primary part. Now by the Chinese remainder theorem, what we get is kt mod t minus 2 into t minus 2 into t minus 3. Uh, that is this um, second factor over here, right, this piece is um, isomorphic to kt mod t minus 2 squared direct sum kt mod t minus 3. This is by the Chinese remainder theorem. Right, and now we'll just collect all the parts with the t minus 2 factor and um, together and keep the t minus 3 factors separately. So what we get is that um, MA is isomorphic to, well, so we have this KT mod t minus 2 and from here we have another KT mod t minus 2 squared. So we have KT mod t minus 2 plus kt mod t minus 2 squared and uh, this part is uh, is the two primary part t minus 2 primary part and then we have another factor here which is um, kt mod uh, t minus 3 and this is the t minus 3 primary part and writing down these parts separately will give us the Jordan canonical form of A. so we know that a is going to have Jordan canonical form. So firstly, this kt by t minus 2, that's just a 1 by 1 matrix with 2. Then this is kt by t minus 2 whole square, which we saw is given by uh, this matrix 2, 2, 1, 0. That's a Jordan block of size 2. And then finally, there's a Jordan block corresponding to the eigenvalue 3, which is just this. 
so we get the Jordan canonical form of our matrix like this so the blocks are there's a one by one block here and then uh, we have a two primary part separated from a three primary part oops so this upper left three by three is the two primary part this thing here is the three primary part and the two primary part has two parts one of size one one jordan block of size one and another jordan block of size two Let's just do one more example to get this a little clearer. So again, we'll uh, say that uh, we know the matrix in rational canonical form. Okay, so we already know how to compute the rational canonical form of a matrix. So we'll use that as a starting point to get to the Jordan canonical form. So suppose um, A is in rational canonical form. let's just take this one like this is a rational canonical form right or better still is to see what the module is m a uh, according to the structure theorem is isomorphic to k t mod t squared minus one plus k t mod t squared minus one so the thing to do is to factorize these polynomials into their irreducible uh, components if we're working on an algebraically closed field those will always be linear so what we get is kt mod t squared minus one is t minus one into t plus one and so by the chinese remainder theorem this will be t minus one plus kt mod t plus one and then we will have another copy of this same thing. Now what you do is you must collect the same type of terms. So you get this is isomorphic to kt mod t minus 1 plus kt or t minus 1 and then kt mod t plus 1 times kt mod t plus 1 and so the jordan canonical form of a is read off from this it has two Jordan blocks corresponding to one, each of size one. So that's just one, zero, zero, one, two Jordan blocks. And then it has two Jordan blocks corresponding to minus one, each of size one. Right, so, so the very simple nature of this matrix becomes evident from the Jordan canonical form. So inside, I'm showing you the Jordan decomposition of each primary part and there are two primary parts. So you can always compute the Jordan canonical form of a matrix from its rational canonical form by separating out the prime factors of each uh, uh, irreducible polynomial that occurs in the um, rational canonical form. And from the Jordan canonical form, you can read out most features of a matrix. Thank you.